I'm Marcus Blake. I'm with That Nerd Show. Oh, cool. So, nice uh, horror is kind of right up our alley. Okay. Uh, we do tend to get a little uh, nerdy, and, you know, we'll have a very nerdy question for you at the end here. Okay. Um, but let's talk about Bloody Barbara. Okay. Uh, so, basically, the story is about a girl who is kind of obsessed with horror films who decides to have bloody makeup and wear it in real life. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did how did this project come to you? Uh, um, that's a good question. Let's see. Uh, I developed it with my wife, the story, and it is based on a combination of things. My wife and I are major horror fans, like beyond belief. Every year we have a 24-hour movie marathon around Halloween. Oh, okay. And we've been doing that for eight years now. And um, we just love horror movies. And I think our reaction, I guess there was a time where people were posting our favorite clips from horror movies online and just became a thing. And I, I guess this is our reaction to that. I like kind of bothered us that there's like spoilers online of our favorite horror movies. So this is just embracing <laughs> that and like making a movie about that. So the char- that's what the character does. She embraces something that bothers her about her favorite movies and then be- makes it her own. Nice. So, and that's what she does. She reenacts scenes from her you know, favorite movies. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like the internet has uh, taken away all the mystery. I mean, I yeah. how how people deal with spoilers. I mean, like, I, I applaud The Walking Dead TV show about them really trying to deal with spoilers. Right. You know, and, and doing their show that's based off a of comic, but not really... You know, and then, but there's big changes. So I mean, it you kind of have to embrace that, and like right. that—that's what's out there. I mean, if you—if there's a certain movie you like, you kind of have to like. I'm I'm going internet dark forever. You know, or, or, or right until I see it. I don't want to hear anything. You know, don't don't tell me. Right. That kind of thing. So, um, so I mean, she's a teenage girl, right? Just right. kind of embracing this as you know, her her basically her love of horror films and stuff. Right. Um, what are, uh, for you and your wife, since you're big horror movie fans, uh, two questions about that. What is it about horror films that, you know, draws you to, to it? And, and I'm assuming that part of that, you know, was displayed with this character. But I mean, what is it about horror films? Um, I guess there's so many levels of horror films, first of all. There's ones that are just super fun. There's ones that don't, that do take themselves seriously. And there's ones that do not. I, I think it's that level... And we're just huge fans of, of Halloween, and we're fans of the genre films. I, there's there's so many rules that can be put into place for these movies, so they can be really big crowd pleasers. And they're, if you're going to these midnight movies, it, there's just nothing more fun than that. Uh, going and seeing movies with with friends or people who are seeing it for the first time, and the excitement is right. just unbelievable. And it's because there's formula in these movies that you know, you kind of know what's going to happen. So when people stray from that and break that, and they embrace it at first, and then they're breaking it in a movie, that's the powerful stuff. And those are usually like the best ones, but even just a straight-up slasher movie, it's right. like you can enjoy that, and you can do that really well. And we just love horror movies on every level. <laughs> so we love the silly ones, we love the serious ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, what... Uh what is your favorite horror film? I mean, what is the one that really speaks to you? My favorite one is The Shining, and it's just it's it's one that I saw when I was really young, and I have older sisters, and they introduced it to me, and I, and I think it, even though it's not the goriest one or the craziest one, it's right. just so well done, and I didn't even know it was a horror film really until like when I was watching, I was just a young, it did scare me. Don't get me wrong. Um, it just creeped me out. But I saw when I was so young, it just had a huge impact on me. It was the first time I really just noticed, like, just the steady camp shots in, in the maze. Right. It just one of those things that startled me. About I was like, whoa, what is this? Like, how is the camera? How is it moving like that? It's the first thing that really made me aware of cinema. So, okay. And we are talking about the the original, not the crappy TV remake. You're talking about the original. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, one of the big themes about our show is talking about remakes, uh-huh. you know, because I think there are certain movies that should never be remade, 
you know, some, I'm like, I, I understand if you're trying to update it. Like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. I get that you want to update it and make it more modern. and, and it, But, you know, it doesn't take away from that original 70s slasher right. version of it. You know. That would be my second favorite horror film, by the way. <laughs> Probably close to the first of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I, I love that movie with the passion. It's right. so amazing. But, the, but some remakes are just completely unnecessary. Like The Omen, for an example. Yeah. Uh, a- <laughs> I love Liv Schreiber, but uh, I, I, how do you remake a film that, you know, with Gregory Peck and Lee Remick and everything, that I just, I don't, in, in a horror film of all things. No, I, I agree with you. I, there's still some remakes. I'm kind of one of those people. I, I quietly boycott some remakes. Like, I don't see them. <laughs> At some point, I will. Like, I don't tell people I'm not going to see that because I'm not totally against remakes, but, you know, I am at this, you know, at the same time, like, for certain movies, or I just don't personally want to watch them. Like, I haven't seen the new Porter Guys movie. I just, I, I love the, the, the yeah. original so much. Yeah. Maybe one day I will watch it. Like I said, I'm not against it, and it's kind of a part of our culture now, so. Well, uh, you, you, you're talking about in your film a girl who you know recreates stuff. I mean, recreating is much more of an homage to your favorite films. Isn't it? I mean, it's not right. just remaking it to try to make more money or make it more modern. Exactly. Right? It, yeah. So, it's for the love right. of these movies. Just yeah. <laughs> it's for the, the pure appreciation. Where if you're make, just making a movie because it has a name, I guess the biggest problem with remakes is when they're just doing it because. you because they, it's an easy way to make a movie, right? And they they don't try to up the original in any way, right? Um, you, we were talking about like uh, the different genres, you know, between slasher and you know, really intense films, and but you know, like horror comedies. Right. Is there a horror comedy film that just really speaks to you? Goodness, there's a lot. I, the only <laughs> I, I'm gonna hate myself for saying a slayer, but it is an amazing. Movie. I love Shaun of the Dead. I mean, it's just so fun. You there's, should never hate yourself for saying that. That's, I know, but <laughs> there's probably gonna be something else that comes up from like I should have said, you know, Evil Dead, or I should have said something. But no, Evil I mean, Dead's not necessarily like comedy, but I guess you know, I, there's it's I, it's yeah, yeah, but yeah, but I think Shaun of the Dead is again, it, it's much more for that homage to George Romero and, and right. zombie flakes and stuff like that. I mean, it is a, they don't take themselves seriously. They are. It's just this very wonderful film, just like everything that they have done in that trilogy. And you know, the world's end. We all recognize it's not the greatest in the. You know, it's the worst one of that trilogy. But like Hot Fuzz is an homage to action movies. Right. So I mean, no. Um, what about uh, Cooties? Have you seen? I have not seen that. Really? Yeah, I have not seen it. Okay, that. well, that's like one of our personal favorites. I better I mean, check it out. Yeah, just, you know, Elijah Wood, I mean, just off the wall, because it is an homage to, like, zombies, but, you know, action and all that. But, okay. I got to check that out. Yeah, yeah. you do. Um, so, Halloween is pretty much y'all's favorite day, right? Yeah. What uh, what would you say, uh, besides The Shining, which is your favorite, what do you think is the perfect Halloween film? Goodness, the perfect Halloween movie that represents Halloween, or just well, yeah. I mean, something that if you're looking to be scared on Halloween, man, I'm sorry, I'm gonna fail this question. No. Honestly, because <laughs> like a million movies are going through my head right now. Um, well, you know, it depends on what crowd you're with. I like last. Uh, uh, are we talking just straight up fun or just scary? Any, anything. I mean, if you're talking about like straight up fun, or oh, and you're right, that, that you kind of have to put it in perspective. Let's let's yeah, say I'll scary. Say, let's say scary. Okay. I mean, this, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna. No, no, no. There's that. This one. This where is that where, this, is where, this is where I fail majorly. <laughs> um, mm, uh, scary, scary, scary. I'm just I, all I can think of is Poltergeist. So my wife and I watch that every year, but it's that's a good one. It's it, a great. It's very scary. It creeps out, but it's a late at night, like right. quiet. If if you, I have parameters when we watch it. It's like we want to watch it at like two or three in the morning, <laughs> and have it be very quiet. A room with like some people that are sleeping and some right. people that are awake. If it's in that atmosphere, it can be really good. Of course, we watch Halloween every year, sure, as well. 
And then if we're going to have fun, uh, I like watching Halloween 3. It's just one of those movies that... <laughs> It's great to watch right. the crowd. There's so many other movies I'm just... Mm, All right, so, so yeah. two more questions okay. for you. One, um, what is next for Bloody Barbara? Is this something that you kind of want to turn into a feature or make, and expand the story? It's not. I, I made it specifically to be short format, and we, we thought about developing it into a feature, and... Um, I mean, if somebody liked it and thought it could become a cool feature, then possibly. Um, we are developing another movie with the actors in it. Uh, so my wife and I, work, we all worked really well together. We are developing another genre movie right now for her. Okay. Um, and it will be in the creepy, supernatural realm. I, another movie right up our alley. Yeah, it, it'll, be, <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. All right, so this last question is something that we ask all, all of our filmmakers that we interview. Okay. Um, something in our wheelhouse. Okay. As a filmmaker, if you can be involved in either Star Trek or Star Wars, what would you choose and why? <laughs> and this is just easy for me. I'm a Star Wars person. <laughs> I was born at that time. And I right. all Star like Star Trek was my dad. Like that was what my dad watched. Like, he, that's just what he watched. And I always associate Star Trek with my dad. And I love Star Trek as I got older. Right. But I was just born as a Star Wars person. Now that Star Wars has reclaimed itself, I am <laughs> I am very excited about that. This past year, we get we just, right. It's we just been feel great, great for me. I like I lost. I felt like I lost. Like it's so lame to even say that, but I do feel like I lost something. Like the excitement I had for these movies. Yeah, the but, prequels kind of did that to everybody. Yeah. It's like. The Force Awakens didn't even have to necessarily be like the greatest Star Wars film right. ever, but exactly. to bring back that nostalgia, it did. And yeah. It was a lot of fun, and I, it's, it's been 